there and welcome if you're new and welcome back if you're back. Um, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them and I'm here with my sweet sweet angel of a co-star Lemon who is coming out of frame. Please come back. There she is. Um, her name is Lemon and I hope she joins us today. Um, so I'm super excited about today's video because it's about zines and um, I don't know when I was growing up zines were still like a thing like I knew about them I made them I wrote them I have like a bunch of them that I've written that like maybe I'll share some of them on this channel one day I've like been wanting to do a tutorial on how to make your own zines um, and also like show off a couple of mine but some of them are like super cringy so I'm, maybe we'll just like show the ones that I'm like yeah this holds up um, but on the other hand um, this video today is about my zine collection. Um, so if you don't know what zines are, zine is short for magazine and um, basically they're little self-published um, books, um, kind of journals, little magazines um, and you can write them about whatever you want. Um, lots of times they are kind of leaning towards more anarchist ideologies and kind of punk rock but you can write them about your favorite bands, you can write them about your favorite conspiracy theories, you could write them about poems you can literally just put a bunch of art in one and have like just an art zine um with like no text over it that would be that that's still a zine um and totally valid and um for me i've always really loved zines because they've been a very affordable um method of information distribution and um sharing and also like it can be anonymous when you have ideas that perchance um are not you, you don't want to be tied to um, like personally for whatever reason legal or um, otherwise but I've also found like amazing communities um, in terms of like zine fairs and like zine artists and um, just there's something about having a physical piece of someone's art in your hand um, especially when it's like collaborative like when a bunch of people work on a zine together um, so I wanted uh, so like basically what happened was the other night I was um, at my parents' house and I was looking at my zine collection that I had above my bed and I started looking through them and I just got super nostalgic and grabbed them all and um, I was reading them like for the last couple days, like rereading some of them. So I sifted them into two piles, like my super favorites, absolutely love them, um, and then my also good but not like super favorites and we'll start with super favorites um, so because it's gonna be a ridiculously long video and I just feel like I had to um, you know organize it one way or the other um, and I'll try to talk about um, where to get zines and stuff at the end or like just throughout the video but I'll definitely talk about it at the end and put a timestamp if you're just interested in that information and I'll try to link um, stuff in the description below as always and okay sorry you guys but I need to real quick show the outfit the fit for the day um, so I never get to wear these ram horns and I was originally gonna wear um, some bat wings today with like this pink dress but I wasn't feeling the pink um, so I decided to go with horns because it felt like being a little otherworldly and then I have this vest um, that's super cool and reminds me of a dragon it has like dragon wings on the back and um, a, a cool hood um, I actually got this for $15 at a festival um, because basically it was the end of the festival, um, everyone was packing up shop and things were like super discounted so I was like alright 15 yes we will do that. Um, and then I'm wearing a green um, like kind of tank top from the thrift store that was a couple of dollars um, and it's like green velvet and black lace. I have, um, I'm trying to like talk about kind of the price points of stuff because I constantly get these um, comments that are like oh old fashioned must be so expensive. Um, but it doesn't have to be, so maybe I'll cut that out, but either way. This belt is like a cool pocket belt, super handy when you don't want to have a bag. And I have my cool patch shorts that I patched myself. And socks and my bracelets and fishnets and stuff. And my trusty ice pack, because it's a thousand degrees and I can't have the fans on because otherwise they make too much noise. Okay, but without further ado, I'm sorry, <laughs> no one's here for the fashion con end. I'm just gonna go through them. I kind of sorted them from smallest to largest. But possibly I'm like, should I go through them from favorite 
but no smallest to largest is a great way to start the first one and I'm not gonna like talk about like I wish I could read them all out to you guys but that feels like weird so I'll try to link all the artists so if you want to read their work you can actually do directly support them but if I have like a favorite page or like give a little taste um, I think that would be fair right so um, this is there we go this is the first scene and it's called Can't Stop uh, by Luisa Luisa. Um, it's mostly an art scene, but there's like a little bit of writing in it. Um, I put it in my favorite category because it's just so itty bitty. And when things are this itty bitty, specifically zines, I'm just like, that is, that's really cool. So that that's a cool art scene. This one I like a lot. It's called Eating Sh a Retrospective. It's the cover on the back. And it's basically just a description of all these different times this person has aged like, um, you know, injured themselves for whatever reason and kind of the aftermath of that. And um, I like it because it reminds me of how resilient people are. I'm a very clumsy person and have a lot of like scars all over my body from just like clumsiness and um, stupid decisions and bad mistakes and stuff like that and like a lot of just like not thinking things through and um, I, I just love how resilient the human body is so um, reading reading about um, someone else's <laughs> times they knocked out their front teeth or broke their arm or whatever I've never broken a bone um, you know knock on wood but it's a good one. This one I love so much and I'm really sad that I actually taped it on my wall for a while and I accidentally taped over the the names of the people so I'll have to look up um, what their names are but my favorite page from it that I had on my dorm room wall when I was in university was this one. Um, it's called so this book is called shark self-help uh, taking back your life one bite at a time and it's like a very like pun filled book about like self-care and being kind to yourself and so my favorite passage from it is it can be a hard slog going from school to school hubs of production just to secure your next feed it can be depressing not living up to lofty goals set out for you expectations high and, su and support low it's okay to realize that being a gray nurse is just as fulfilling as being a sturgeon you will have bad days. No one is expected to have a toothy grin every day, but it doesn't have to be your whole life. There are always other sharks around to give you a friendly boop on the nose. And I just, ugh, it means a lot to me. The shark on the cover is really cute. Um, it's a good one. This I included because it feels really nostalgic to me because it's a zine in the form of a um, choose your own adventure book. Um, when I was a kid, the library was like my favorite place because um, I grew up in a really small town and went to school in the city. So I'd have these super long drives back and forth, well not drives, bus rides, back and forth. Um, and I would listen to like my little mp3 player and read my choose your own adventure books or my little like lemony snicket and stuff like that. So um, th this feels nostalgic for me and I like it because it has some really cute goblin art. Um, it's called Slow Quest Pick Your Own Adventure Zine, Quest 1, The Goblin Guard, and it's by Bodhi A. Bodhi A? Maybe? I'll, I'll, like, put a little picture of the cover and back cover of all these, like, next to, um, when I'm talking about them, so y'all can, like, look up the artist and also try to link them if I can find them. This one is a great zine called Marriage and Love by Emma Goldman. Um, she has a bunch of them in this kind of series. It was from... Uh, this one was a gift from one of my best friends in university. Uh, basically, it's a history of marriage and how um, women were essentially viewed as property for the longest time and marriage was this very much financial transaction and how most people nowadays are still pressured into it for the tax benefits, for the social and legal benefits. You know, so it's, uh, it's a really good read really recommend Emma Goldman's work. Um, this one's kind of fun. It's called My Mom is the Chupacabra um, and it's basically a zine about having like conservative parents but in the zine the conservative parent is the Chupacabra. This one's just like a fun little weird zine. One thing that I just love so much about zines is that people can just put their weird art out there and it doesn't have to like make sense in the classical way and like there's no teachers judging it, there's no parents giving you criticism there's like, like it's just your work out there and it doesn't have to be like perfect it can just be like kind of weird and sketchy and um people will relate to it okay this one is really <laughs> i really like this one uh but it's it's a little questionable i guess you could say um it's called applicant and basically um 
uh, I'll just read you. <laughs> I'll just read you the explanation from it of the foreword, and then I'll show you my favorite um, applicant in it. Um, one night while rooting through the recycling bin for magazines, I found all the confidential PhD applicant files for the biology department at an Ivy League university from the years 1965 to 1975. Stapled to many of the yellow documents were photographs of the prospective students. They were treasures. I tore through the folders and rescued every portrait I could find. I had to have them. Only later did I realize I had to publish them. A recommendation form supplied accompaniment via their strengths and weaknesses or personality sections. The quotes below each photo are actual things said about the pictured students by their former professors or employees not intended to be seen by anyone but the application review committee. My selections are often unflattering, but perhaps insightful into these students as well as their referees. Referees? Referees. Um, it is worth mentioning that despite their shortcomings, most of the applicants went on to earn degrees and are now probably professors themselves, writing recommendations, one imagines. Lastly, I suppose distributing this material may be immoral, or perhaps illegal. In a half-hearted defense, I reiterate that it was intended for recycling. Taking that concept to an ab abstraction, I'm recycling these words and pictures that had served their purpose, hoping to make them into something else worthwhile. Singularly devoted to sponges. Um, this guy over here, or somewhat of a warrior, this guy over here. Um, and <laughs> I have such a fondness for other people's old pictures. Um, when I was growing up, there was this thrift store in the downtown of the city that I um, lived at, and one of the things that it always had was a chest, like a little treasure chest, full of vintage photographs. Most of them were in black and white of just like random strangers. Um, and I think they were just something like 25 cents each and everything in the store cost too much except for the photographs for me. So I would just collect the photographs. And I remember my mom like seeing them on my wall and she was like, who are these people? Like, this is so weird that you have like other people's pictures. And I just like thought it was cool, but then I got really self-conscious and thought it was weird. But um, seeing this and just like looking at vintage average Joes, like just people that I don't know, look like pictures of your parents back in the day, you know, it, it's it's cool to see that. Oh, my boyfriend's home. Hi! Hello. Okay, this one is called a Positivity Guide, um, and it's basically a different list of tips for mental health advice, things that people have learned over time, um, and I think the foreword says, this is a self-help guide for punks, nerds, and malcontents. Living outside of mainstream society can be hard. We all need support. I use these exercises to reduce anxiety and invigorate the mundane. These are simple ideas. I hope they help you to embrace a positive mental attitude. <laughs> it's totally cheesy, I know, but remember that you're not alone. And I completely agree with this. This is a really good, um, um, uh, zine, this is the author Gina Sparty, yep, Gina Sardi, sorry about that, Oakland, California, fall 2013. Um, so, really love this one, highly recommend. Okay, next one, another kind of positivity guide. Uh, this one is called A Positive Attitude Makes All the Difference in the World, A Guide on Positive Thinking. And it's like this beautiful yellow color. One thing that I really love is when people print their monochromatic zines on, um, whatchamacallit, one piece of paper, because one of the ideas about uh, behind zine is that they're very um, cheap to reproduce and distribute. So for instance, when I was in university, the printers, it would cost seven cents for a single side piece of black and white paper, so I was able to write zines on one page. Um, for instance, this is written on one page. And you like fold it. Um, so it's easy to um, basically write a zine in like a couple days or a couple weeks and then reproduce it for really really cheap and distribute it for free like around your local city or whatever. This one I really really love. Um, it's just different things that I've been lucky enough to have learned in therapy but if you don't have access to therapy or if you're too shy to go um, this might be a really beautiful first step. Um, it's by Simon Simmons Fine Art. Um, the back cover says, it's okay if thinking positive is hard, do what's best for you to get to the next day. Be authentic, you believe in yourself. And it's just um, a really good one that I like to read on days that I'm feeling a little low, so it's good to have it here now that I can um, read it again. Um, this is kind of a funny short one called Why Are You Dumping Me? Um, and I think it's just collections from the author's times of being dumped and the excuses that they have um, encountered with that. It's just kind of like that sad, funny, depressing, um, where you're like, ugh, I really, that sucks, but like, yeah, I feel you. So, um, solidarity for, um, poor relationship choices, but better relationships going forward, you know? It's all about growth. 
Ooh, this one's really cool, and I fear that you're not going to be able to see the cover very much, because even I can't see the cover very much. When I was looking at it again, I was like, eh. However, it's called Dusk. Oh, yeah, you can see it there. Um, and it's really beautiful. Usually I don't like art zines that much because I have trouble um, in most cases like staring at a piece of art for a really long time. It's easier for me to read a comic or like read something that has like written word like um, visual stuff is not um, usually something that I can like stare a bunch at. Like I love to put visual stuff on my wall and to like look at it and like flip through it on Tumblr and stuff and collect it that way. Uh, but visual zines usually aren't super my thing. However, this artist, I don't know why, but I could stare at this stuff forever. Um, I like this one because it feels really um, like blue and white china. Is that what it's called? Like that kind of porcelain stuff? And this zine also, despite being um, like an art zine, it also feels like a comic even though there's no words, like there's definitely a storyline throughout it. Um, it's by Michael Heck, uh, Pity, Party Studi Pity Party 2014, pitypartystudios.com, I'll yeah, put the thing, but I really like this one. Another super awesome zine that I absolutely love that's a little different and unique. Um, the title is in Braille. The title of it is Soliloquy. Um, so basically it has this introduction page. Uh, basically the point of it is to be a zine with alternate forms of communication. Um, so it has Morse code, sign language, basics, binary code, um, tap code, things like that. Um, and I think that it's just really great um, to have zines that are accessible. Um, and can maybe teach people that don't necessarily need to learn um, kind of non-verbal uh, language right now um, how to do it, that like they can learn some basics and have like a little introduction. And it's just a really great concept. I think we should have more zines on accessibility because um, amazing. Okay, this one <laughs> is really cool. This um, art style, I don't know what you would call it. Um, it's like the very kind of, like I, I associate this with like skater boys in my high school, like doodles with like these like eyeballs popping out of heads and like all this like really gory stuff. But it's like a comic book and I just really love the art style and it feels very nostalgic for me. Um, even though I definitely have to like squint a lot when I'm reading it. It's like the very classic like crusty punk kind of experience, you know, pizza and beer, um, a lot of that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes it's like, I just want to sit on my roof and read these zines. Um, I can't eat pizza unless it's vegan pizza, but Amy's pizza, oh my god, oh, heaven. Um, I, like, definitely, it makes me want to, like, sit on the roof and read it, and yeah, okay, it's fun. Um, this is another art kind of slash comic zine. Where can I even find- it's called Hideous. It's kind of a collection of short comics. I really like it because it's got all these colorful pages with kind of this construction paper, I guess you would call it, maybe? It's cool. I love seeing people who make small art. Like, lots of these comics feel like they're in very small little boxes and it- and, it, and I like the compactness of it. Um, this one is great. It's called Shit You Learn in the Bathroom. Um, it's by Jeffrey Sadel. Um, it's, I really like it. It's a very profound zine while also like not taking itself seriously and being very like jokey around and stuff. Um, but it like definitely hits you in the feels and it is literally about lessons you learn <laughs> in the bathroom. Um, but the end of it gives me gendered euphoria a little bit. Um, so I really appreciate that. Not the end of it. The end of it's sad, but the middle of it. I'll just read you guys the passage that gives me gender euphoria. Uh, looking in the mirror, we discover what we want to look like, who we want to be, what we don't want to look like, who we refuse to be, and who we are. We learn a friendship, who we care about, who cares about us. We discover what we have. It's just, it means a lot to me. I really like this scene. Um, it very like simple illustrations and few words, but gets the message across really well. Okay, this is one of my favorite zines and I pass it around so much at my university, which is why the covers are like a little bit bent and it's like not in the best shape, uh, but it's called Our Best Shot, The True Story of an Illegal and Supervised Injection Facility in the USA. Um, it's published by Silver Sprocket. Um, it's $5. Um, you can get it on silversprocket.net, I'm sure. 
Um, basically, it is about a basically a safe house in an abandoned building where people could do drugs in a supervised manner where other people who were in the community would look after them and not like rat them out to the police and stuff and it just talks about the importance of um, compassion for people who struggle with drug use and addictions the importance of safety the importance of safe locations um, for people to use drugs because people will use drugs regardless of whether they have like a clean place to do it or not so if you like it's if it's the alley versus like a safe supervised facility like you'd rather someone be safe because people are anyway it's a really great zine highly recommend it um it has information on what to do if someone overdoses um it has kind of the reality of what it's like to live in a space with a lot of like these communal punk spaces i've never lived in one but i've been to a lot of parties in them and i can a lot of grime and dirt and is like part of the space but also there's a lot of compassion and community and care and um you know it all goes together so highly recommend our best shot um by silver sprocket so yeah it's a really good one um this one i just want to talk about it's called skull water um but the thing that's cool about it i can't i don't know if you can see it it's 3d and it comes with a pair of 3D glasses. Um, the story is just kind of like a horror story. It's a pretty good one, but um, the thing that I love about it is the fact that it has 3D glasses and you can like look at a 3D zine. Like, and, and 3D glasses don't look like this anymore, so this very, feels very much like my childhood, so that's always fun. Um, this one is called Pigeon Life, and it's all about um, how to travel around and um, kind of tips for you know, train hopping and hitchhiking and doing these kinds of things. I had um, a month where I spent time um, before going to university with a partner just going around um, British Columbia in their van and like sleeping um, where we could um, and stuff and it was really cool like I, I was really appreciative to have that road trip experience um, and I brought this book um, with me. Um, but it was, it's, it's a great book, um, highly recommend it if you are looking to do the, the pigeon life kind of thing, the, the train hopping, hitchhiking kind of thing, um, but you know, if you do that, be safe, um, this, this is a good book to read, um, if you want to learn about it, um, a little bit more. Um, this is a great zine called Your Black Friend, um, the art is really great and I'll read the back cover for you your black friend is an open letter from your black friend to you about race racism friendship and alienation yeah it talks a lot about privilege and tackles police brutality and violence and um, racism and I think it's a uh, it's a good one um, it's a little older but it, it still holds up um, I think fellow white people please support this creator and go read the scene this is another one of my favorites it's called imaginary homework um, it's by Theo Ellisworth. Um, I really love the illustration style in it. It reminds me of like childhood books. I don't know what kind of childhood books, uh, but it's basically all these imaginary homework assignments that are like just whimsical and weird and I'll just read you the front cover. I originally made imaginary homework as actual homework for the students who took my 2009 workshop at Artfest in Pop Townsend, Washington. Due to requests from various individuals, I have decided to finally make it available to the general public. Uh, thank you for do doing imaginary homework. You're going to do great. I really like this. Um, I would definitely recommend this zine. I love the art style and it's just a lot about imagination and if you are a person who feels like in your childhood you didn't get to have that imagination and you maybe grew up fast or because of circumstances that were um, toxic or abusive or harmful um, you you didn't get to experience like childlike wonder and stuff like that I think this is a beautiful zine um, to kind of get to experience some of that and um, just like dip your toes into that again. So that's something that I would definitely um, consider looking into. Um, this scene is from a person who is very, very dear to me. It's called No More City, a Vancouver anarchist publication. If you are in Vancouver, please, please keep an eye out for this zine. Um, the anarchist bookstore, go to that see if you can find this. Um, this is the fall winter 2021 edition. And my favorite article in it 
is called Fostering a More Compassionate Response to Fear Within Anarchist Communities by Firebrat. And um, it's on page 25. And it just talks about the importance um, within communities that resist the systems and stuff to not brush off the fear that like our fellow comrades can feel like things that might be perceived by us as paranoia and not legitimate forms of fear or worries we need to be compassionate about those we need to listen to people we need to um, take them seriously and I, I think it was just really important um, and it also talks about being compassionate with yourself and um, recognizing that like you can work through the fear but you have to face it um, it was very important to for me to read and I really really appreciated it so um, I highly recommend this zine you can check out this website there and yes absolutely hardcore recommend this this one is called aliens exist it's by Lily Padula and this was one of my like really favorite zines when I was like 15 and just like so into UFO stuff um, it's basically a bunch of different art depicting different like pop culture um, and historic alien abduction events or alien um, kind of experiences so it just feels really nostalgic if you're into cryptozoology if you're into alien stuff if you're into um, just weird weird things. The art's just really beautiful as well. I love the green and orange tones. It just feels really mysterious. Highly recommend Aliens Exist. Ooh, this was another one of my favorites that I would pass around a lot at university. Um, it's called Scoops and it's by Robert. Uh, Robert Makes. Um, and it's different scoops of landscapes. And I know I said I didn't really like art zines, but I could stare at this forever. I don't know. I just think they're really cool. I really, really like this. I highly, highly recommend this one. I don't know. Okay. Um, this is one of my favorite pages in um, Scoops. And basically the back cover explains that um, it was basically Scoops um, was conceived by Robert during a daily drawing challenge as a way to break up the high volume of character illustrations he was making at the time. The premise of Scoops went like this. Imagine a giant ice cream scoop digging out chunks of land and scenery from all over the world. Um, so it's just really a beautiful book. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, I hate recording when there's cars, which is always because I live on a high busy street. Um, and I'm really sorry there's going to be a lot of car noise in this video. I wish I could help it, but I can't. Um, this next zine is by Akira. It's called The Story of My Life. Um, I would really, really recommend this one. Um, it's an incredibly important story. It's incredibly sad and um, I cry when I read it, um, but it's extremely important. Um, I'll leave um, explanations of the donation um, I'll, I'll leave this open, the, the page of donations, um, next to me while I talk, but basically, um, it's the story of this person's life, Akira, from when they were a small child. It's extremely difficult to put into words. I would really just recommend you read it, you go on his website, you donate if you can. Um, he, as a child soldier, had to build landmines um, in Cambodia and now works in a project to remove as many landmines as possible from um, the war. And um, you can donate to help with their projects. Um, they're clearing the landmines and building a school where it used to be touching story. It's an extremely sad story, but I highly, highly, highly recommend um, that you read The Story of My Life by Akira. Okay. The next one, it feels so weird to transition off of that one because it's such an important story. But this is another art zine um, by Cafe Racer. Look at this art. So this zine is called Dune, and it is a collection of this artist's work that they would um, draw um, every day of the week at the same time um, in at this specific cafe. And there's a lot of really cool primordial imagery, and it kind of reminds me of Fantasia, which was one of my favorite um, Disney movies um, when I was younger but it's just really cool. I like the art style a lot. I like it, the line art um, and the colors. Um, so this zine is called Grand Rapids Missed Connections and it's an illustrated um, zine of different 
Um, you know those misconnections that they put in the paper, like, I was wearing a blue shirt and you were on the bus and we made eye contact and blah blah blah? This, this is um, a collection of those. Um, so visual interpretations are by Corey Schnell. Um, I, I really like this zine. It's, it's very creative. It's, it's very funny. Um, the, the way people write in misconnections is just, um, it's just entertaining. So um, this is a fun, lighthearted one that I enjoy. <sighs> this is Field Notes on the American Sa Sasquatch, a guide by David Norman. And um, it's very interesting, I'll definitely say that. Um, they are the field notes of someone's uncle or grandfather who was really into the Sasquatch subculture, the cryptozoology, specifically Sasquatch, um, you know, belief, you know, that they're out there. Um, and. Unfortunately, he disappeared, and the um, person who published the zine has this very touching part where they talk about how they hope that he found his home with the Sasquatches. Um, but it's it's a very it's a very interesting introduction if you are new to cryptozoology and just want to read someone else's field notes, um, or if you've been into field uh, cryptozoology for a long time and are just interested in another guy's. Um, thoughts on if Sasquatch are aliens and if they had contact with indigenous people before um, we colonized, we before um, white people colonized, um, you know, America. It has explanations of diet and why Sasquatch corpses are never found and are they really angels? So it's, it's, it's a good read. I like the illustrations in it a lot. This next one is called Conditions on the Ground, um, The Ambassador. I don't know what the exact title is, but my favorite character in it is that guy. He's cool. I just like the way he's illustrated. Uh, but it's a very uh, trippy kind of story, I would say. Um, yeah, look at this little guy. The little strumming guy at the top. How fun is that? Um, there's monsters in it. There's a dude who seems like he's on LSD possibly during it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I like it a lot. And there's a couple of different comics um, in it with just that like kind of fun hippie art style. I don't know what you would call this art style, but it's very fun. Um, this is in a series um, by this guy. I'm sure you can find um, more of it on his website. I'll list it below. Conditioned Hui Man. Yeah. This one is cool. Um, when I was 17 or something, I went to this festival with my parents, um, like this music festival, and, oh, 2017, who knows when that was, but this was a zine they handed out, um, at it, um, and it's a coloring book, but it's also just, like, really fun, goofy illustrations, my absolute favorite page on this that I colored in and had, like, on my wall for, since I had it, was the I like to bite stuff and I'm happy when people are having fun. I just love goofy weird art and um this feels like goofy weird art um everything you can imagine is real you know that's fun a wild coloring book for all the children of freya 2017. um so this is a good good zine i don't know if you can find it anywhere but um fun stuff um and this is another choose your own adventure um it's called welcome to flamingo bill um and it's this beautiful pink and blue illustrations all throughout and just like the other um, choose your own adventure I mostly like it because it feels nostalgic and I just love the concept of choose your own adventures um, and then I'll go really quickly through my honorable mentions but not like super favorite um, zines this one is called wise blood I don't know why but the writing style reminds me of fight club like Chuck Pal Palin that one you know I don't know if you've read it but I, I like watched the movie or heard all this talk about it and then I was like okay I'll read the book and all of it was very like dark pain my eyes open like it was very disjointed and I just like couldn't really read it um, but this is similar so if that is something you're into um, and and it does talk about um, addiction and uh, mental health and stuff like that definitely check it out um, still totally worth mentioning uh, this is a fun one called Baculite Mountain um, it has cool little art style about a little wizard going to the to the mountain um, this is called everything dies um, number seven 
The art style is, I don't know what it's very reminiscent of, but it's very reminiscent of something. Specifically, no, I realize now. It's like, I had this poster of these like pink and blue and like light green like creatures on my wall when I was younger and they were all very like blobby and amorphous and this this reminds me of it. Um, this is Kurt Cobain was lactose intolerance conspirit. This is the Kurt Cobain was lactose intolerant conspiracy zine, um, which is kind of a joke zine, I think. No, it is. It's 100% a joke scene, but it's basically about, um, it, like it's done in the style of a conspiracy zine, but all about how um, Kurt was lactose intolerant and he like self-medicated his pains from the lactose intolerance with heroin. And it's, it's pretty dark, but it's, <laughs> Um, it's, you know, one of those. All right, um, I don't know why this is in the zine pal, but it's an animal tracks guide of Canadian animals. Oh, so cute. Love opossums. Oh, this is the best page. All the opossums and the skunks and the bears and the otters. Okay. Um, this is a fun one, but it's also sad because it's like um, a story of this sea serpent um, in Brazil and how these guys tried to sell the story of it. And I always get really bummed out when conspiracy theories are like, this is fake and this is why. Like, I, let me believe it, it's way more fun. Um, at least when it's about fun stuff, not when it's about like really harmful to like satanic panic type stuff. This one's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad in that way, but it's, the, the art is cool. This is an art zine. Um, this is the kind of art that I was really into when I was like 15. Just like, I don't know what you call this, but it's fun. I had this on my wall for a long time, I think. Like I photocopied this and put it on my wall because I didn't want to like rip up the zine. Yeah. Um, this is Tasteful Insect, which is just like a joke zine um, showing insect nudes with with captions about how saucy the insects are. Uh, this is called Someone Up There Just Like Me and it's mostly an art zine with this kind of art style. Kind of reminds me of, is it the Bones comic maybe? I don't know. No, this is definitely its own thing. Is this Happy Tree Friends? I never watched it but I hear it's very violent. Anyway, this is called Love is Stupid. Um, and it's about feelings and how they can be really hard, um, love feelings can be really hard, but how they're worth it in the end, and even though, like, yeah, it's a good one. I like it. Um, it's by xxcow.com. I don't know why this is in my zine collection, probably just because it's a little book, but it's a how to read palm guides, palmistry kind of thing. That's cool. This is a little short comic zine by Gino Dalsin um, from 2015. Lots of kind of Homer's, or uh, lots of kind of Simpsons art, it seems. This is a fun um, collection. It's all about different uh, disasters and um, things that have happened uh, historically that have not gone well. This one specifically is about the great um, Boston molasses flood. If you're more interested in that, I think My Favorite Murder has an episode on it where they explain what happened, but it was a big tragedy and a lot of people died. Um, but these zines kind of um, document different history of just weird, obscure, or just like very bizarre um, historical stuff like that. Um, this is called Seductive Morphs, and I don't know if I can show some of it. Some of it I can for sure show. Um, but it's just like weird, weird art, weird morph, seductive morph art. I don't know what else you'd call it. <laughs> I got this in a zine subscription. Um, I'll go, I'll go into that at the end. This is called Young American and um, it's by Andy Hood and it's a good zine. Cool art style, just kind of some grim experiences with the world um, growing up, I think young American. I, I'm Canadian, so can't really relate. Yeah, it's a, it's interesting. This one is, this one is full of just interesting art that I am, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. 
in lots of different ways. Um, some of the colors are a little bit eye strainy in some spots and there's a lot of kind of like just kind of bizarre themes but um, it's definitely an interesting one. This is another kind of jokey zine called How to Talk to Your Cat About Abstinence it's from the American Association of pa Patriots. Um, and it's like a very nice quality, like shiny, well-produced zine, but it's just all about genuinely how to talk to your cat about abstinence. And it's got a lot of cat puns in it. Um, this is so cool. This is a zine that I got um, when I was at an AJJ concert, concert with my boyfriend now. And it's about... Um, and it's just a bunch of art. It's mostly an art zine. But I really like it and AJJ is a really good band and they mean a lot to me and getting to see them live was like one of the coolest experiences ever. Um, and seeing their art just... Uh, or seeing Sean Bowitz Bonnets? Bonnet. Who knows? Um, seeing this art is like a cool other layer on that. So. Um, that is my whole zine collection. I hope you guys can check out some of the artists maybe that I mentioned or look at your own local zine um, scene. Um, basically, so if you want to get zines, if you're like in a bigger city, you can probably find zines at like a local anarchist kind of organization. If you have a bookstore or something like that, um, look online um, on Facebook groups um, for your city plus zines. Um, if you are in a rural, rural, place um, that doesn't really have that kind of community you can always find them online but there's something that's really nice about having like a physical copy of it so what I would recommend because I grew up in a rural area that I felt like I didn't have access to um, zines so a lot of these I actually got before I went to zine fairs and stuff um, I actually got in this subscription got box called Xenomatic and I remember like I usually feel like pretty weird about subscription boxes because I'm like you're buying a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily know if you'll like and like for the most part it's like stuff that you end up not using and throwing out at least from what I hear um, but it's different for zines in my opinion because um, at least with zines it's like you get to read independent writers art and like I don't know. In my opinion, there, there's a there's a difference between getting a bunch of products you won't use versus getting a bunch of zines you might not read, but then can maybe like donate to a friend and you still like support an independent artist. But you can also look on Etsy. Um, you can look on Instagram probably for people that write zines. Um, but Etsy would probably a great be a great place to start um, to look for them if you're not sure where to start. But I can but I will also be linking all of these. Um, websites that I can find on the back of zines and in the um, cover pages and stuff below in the description so definitely feel free to check that out and if you write a zine or you know of some that you want to recommend absolutely leave those in the comments we would love to see them um, but yeah basically I think that with the rise of like social media and technology I think that just like zines don't get passed around enough anymore um, so I'll definitely if you guys want be making a video all about how to make your own zine and uh, be showing you the good ones that I've made um, in the past and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some other ones because um, you know it's a really special art form and I think that a lot of people would really benefit from from making zines because they're just like so cool and so accessible and so fun and you can get messages across so well. So I hope I've convinced you to maybe check out your local zines or zine library or just like see what you can find in your local area about that. Um, I really appreciate you guys spending so much time with me um, in this video. I feel like it was really long and very rambly um, but I hope you had fun and I know I did. It was cool to like reminisce about these guys and um yeah, that's all I got. I hope you are being kind to yourself and the people around you. I hope you have a really great rest of your day and I'm sending you a really, really big hug. So um, yeah, that's all I got for you today. Bye and have a good one.